The next item was they measured insulin resistance using a calculation of HOMA IR. HOMA IR is considered by many to be the gold standard for measuring insulin resistance. Here's how you do that. HOMA IR stands for Homeostatic Method Assessment of Insulin Resistance. And here's what you do. You measure the blood glucose in milligrams per deciliter. You multiply that times the insulin level and you divide that by 405. So basically what you're doing, it is an appropriate thing. It's very helpful and quite often it's right, but not always. So the question is, how much insulin is it taking you to get to an appropriate healthy level of glucose? Optimal Optimum would be five or less on the insulin number, and optimum would be 90 or less on the glucose number. And again, here's the problem with that assumption. You see it quite often, it's helpful quite often, it's clearly better than the most common thing that's used. The most common thing is not to look. The second most common thing is that the doctor uses only fasting glucose, and it's much, much better to add fasting insulin to that value. So from those perspectives, it's clearly better than the standard, but I see it all the time. I see it a lot, maybe 20% of the patients that I see that have very significant insulin resistance. Once you challenge them at a normal HOMA IR in the fasting state, that is the problem with HOMA IR. It is a snapshot, a fasting state snapshot, and it's not a response to a challenge. Insulin sensitivity, IS is calculated using the following formula. Insulin sensitivity is one over the HOMA IR. So that's what they actually used. HOMA IR, again, it's an insulin resistance score. It was developed in 1985. Again, you see comments on our channel all the time. Oh, I got my HOMA IR, so that's the best thing there. Again, yes, it's a lot better than a fasting glucose. And in some ways, it's better than an A1C. You know, HOMA IR and A1C are very, very different ways of estimating this problem. A1C actually has the advantage in that it has more of a, a long-term picture, but again, none of them are as good as an OGTT with insulin response, oral glucose tolerance tests with insulin response, more commonly known as the Kraft Insulin Survey.